Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. I am JT O'Sullivan. Today, Jordan Love, the pack on the road versus Pittsburgh. Fired up for this one. Let's get it going. Welcome to the QB School. <laughs> Before we dive into the video, a quick reminder about the Quarterback School Patreon community. This group continues to be the bedrock, the foundation of this channel. Thank you so much for your support. If you become a member, you get even more Quarterback School content. I'm really trying to create the environment of what it's like in an NFL quarterback room, so all sorts of nuance, detail, depth about not only the quarterback position, but high-level offense and defensive football. If you are interested, hop over there, join, become a member. I appreciate your support. As for this video, let's get into it. All right, Jordan Love, the Packers. Bit of a tough L on the road versus Steelers right here. First play of the game. A little gun out to the field. I love the rhythm that Love is playing with right here. The drop, the cadence. You know, I think this shows some significant ability to play on time within the structure of the offense. We'll see the anticipation here at the top of this thing, right? He goes to throw it. You can see the receiver at the bottom not out of the break yet. The only difference here is just the ball location, the accuracy, the precision. Balls that used to be handoffs in Green Bay are now we got to make diving plays or we're on the ground. And it's just that little bit of misradius that, you know, for whatever reason is still part of what Jordan Love is doing right now. I think you see positive signs, but we just need more precision. Next one right here, third and three. Down here to the bottom, we're going to work the over or the cross. Really nice job again from Jordan Love. Outstanding timing, rhythm, sequence to what he's going, what's going on here. This is a tight, contested coverage and throw, and Jordan Love puts it right on him. Protects him from the safety. Look at this throw. I mean, that is tight coverage, right? Right in the hip with the safety on top, on the body, on the break. Beautiful throw. Again, I absolutely love the timing, the footwork, the drop on schedule. One, two, three, hitch, let it go. So again, just the drop, one, two, three. Look at the base. Boom. You can see him ripping that thing down here to the bottom right on the bottom of the logo. Let's that thing go. Tight contested window, NFL coverage, better throw. And just a great job from Jordan Love here early on, staying on schedule, in rhythm, on time, throwing strikes. Next one here, got a little Miami Dolphins. Fast motion all the way across the formation. He's going to run a dagger. Big play action. It's not there initially. Second window, no. Third window, yes. Great job from Jordan Love. Keeping his eyes downfield. Buying a little bit of time. You know, whatever the Packers are doing with this stop, drop, and roll technique on the ground a few times this game. No right away. Move. Eyes downfield. Again, we're buying time. Creative. You know, out of structure, but still in structure. That kind of like purgatory of the play so what is going on here concept wise we're going to do this all the way across so this motion and then we're running the dagger and i think you could make an argument that maybe you could throw that thing right out of the cut if you played with world-class anticipation you know the reason you wouldn't is because they're going to do us a favor here and drop 90 and he gets enough depth here where if this wasn't a perfect anticipation throw you know i a for instance would be like a guy like Tua is throwing this. But I could see why you wouldn't want to throw it. And so when you don't throw it, that first window isn't there. The second window isn't there. The third window is there on the dagger. And he keeps working it across because we're able to buy enough time up, eyes downfield, and ripping it. So again, I'll pause it here when I think he should throw it with anticipation potentially at the top. You can see the motion. Play fake. Throw. So right there, that's an anticipation throw for me. And again, it's not the end of the world that he doesn't do it, but this is open in my opinion. Again, 90 was starting at the line of scrimmage. He's getting depth. Can you throw this thing from here on time, in schedule, deeper down the field? I think maybe you could. Okay, it doesn't really matter what I think. We're able to continue on here. He doesn't like it by time. By time, second window, third window, yes. And again, just a little bit better of a ball, and this is a better play. It's on the back hip. We fall down. We stop, drop, and roll. Okay, so again, 
There's no knock here. This is a great play. You could see potentially it being there on time in structure, but we're buying time. Eyes down the field, back hip, keep your feet. Nice chunk. Next one here. This is a cool design. We get this little like faux shift down here to the bottom. We're going to try to catch him off guard and run an iteration of mesh. Now, Jordan Love doing his arm angle thing here, getting hit at the lower half. There's reasons why this thing is kind of a borderline turnover worthy play. You know, again, he's getting hit, getting cute, dropping down the arm. Now, again, that ball easily could be intercepted right there, right? Not Maybe not easily. The guy could catch you be playing offense. Could have been intercepted, potentially. Now, the reason why I don't love the route is because of the angle that we're running this shallow at. So the first thing here, I do like the play design. So we've got the running back out here. He's going to fake like he's coming back in, like you see all these teams do to get that man zone check. So we fake that shift, and then we snap it, quick snap it. The mesh element here, when we come across, and this is the main point of this play, when he comes across here, I prefer these things, and the line is the great indicator, to stay flat or even friendly. That means almost like a negative line. What you don't want to do is come out here and drift up like this because that allows the defender to undercut this thing. So at worst, you want to come flat. So over and then flat down the line. It's a pretty good line. That's the problem, in my opinion. So he drifts, and now it's a crummy throw. It's complicated or made more difficult by the arm angle and the fact that we're getting hit. But you can see here the mesh. Again, look at, I think that's Watson coming across. See the top mesh? See 11 come across and run flat? That's flat. Now watch the number one up top come across and drift. So he's drifting right there. And just that little attention to detail makes this throw harder than it should be and potentially could be a turnover inside the red zone. So just these little nuanced bits. And again, you can see he's not quite on schedule, right? We've shown so far everything has been on schedule when he's let it go on time. Up. <laughs> Drop the arm down. Almost intercepted. Next one, third and seven. Touchdown pass. Beautiful job right here. We're going to hit a corner down here to the bottom. The number one. They get a little confused on the back end. We catch the leverage we want. Really nice touch ball to the corner. Outstanding job. Great use of motion. Nice play call. You can see what the motion does. Makes life difficult on the defense. They got to make quick decisions. Outstanding base from Jordan Love. Throwing that thing with accuracy to the deck, to the back pylon. So watch the adjustment to motion and what it does to the back end. So now we're coming back. Okay, This little back and forth motion. So when we do this back and forth motion, it makes the defense adjust. So the defense has to adjust. Not only do they have to adjust, but they have to communicate. It's almost like these guys are tied on a string here. How are we going to handle these three eligibles? Well, whatever they do here, this guy sure looks like he's playing in no man's land. So yeah, he's there, but he doesn't really take anything away. So we just come up and we've got the leverage from the inside defender up top and the safety in no man's land. And we're able to put that ball right to the back pylon. Great vision, like the design, great play call. Third and seven touchdown pass. Hell yes. You can just watch that safety down here to the bottom. Flat footed, taking away no one. If anything, he's probably guessing for that motion guy to come back under on like a little short post. Great job from Jordan Love. Look at the base here. I love the fact that he plays in rhythm with a great base on time, one hitch. Beautiful throw back corner. That's an awesome rep. That's great design. Excellent quarterback play, execution, rhythm, timing, in structure, balance, rip it, dot. Next one here, second and 16. We're going to throw up top the number one, kind of a deep out. And the throw is okay. It's a little high. I think the timing of this is okay. It's maybe a hitch late. You'd love to see that ball caught as well. So for me here from gun, he's going to go five and two hitches. So one, two, three, four, five, hitch throw. So the part that I would prefer to see that that great love timing is five, one, two, three, four, five, that base. Keep your feet just like that. So you can see here, 
separated, separated. When you hitch, what I'm used to calling tight hitch or tight reset. So just a ever so much, keep that base locked in. Do not bring your feet together. So you bring your feet together, we pop up, we take an extra hitch, and now we sky mail this thing. So again, you can take this big five, so big five drop, maybe control five, take that thing, and then this is exactly the leverage you want. So we're running, even though we're inside leverage, because the technique of this corner is essentially running with his rear to the sideline, you've got anything you want out here. You just got to be able to hook it up, throw a little bit more of a friendly ball, a little bit more accurate, a little bit more precision. But watch the footwork. See him just kind of bring his heels together, whoop, and pop up. Keep that base, tight hitch, and throw it. Just a tick late. He still plays with a little bit of anticipation. When's he let that thing go? Right there. I mean, he's playing with anticipation up top. It's just a little bit high. I think he doesn't do himself a kind of the best technique he possibly could with his lower half. And again, we can see it here. Hitch. It doesn't help that our left tackle is getting dump trucked right into our lap here. You know, boom. So close to a nice throw outside the numbers. Very next play, third and 16, touchdown pass to the number three up top. We're going to get in quads. We're going to chip Watt. We're going to take a big shot to the number three, and he just runs right by what is normally a poach or tricks technique there by that weak safety. Gets no help. Great job from Jordan Love seeing this thing, buying enough time, having the arm strength and the accuracy to put it on him for a massive play. Two touchdown passes on third down, outstanding. So again, there's a lot to like here as far as the design. The first part is we're going to shift to quads, right? So we shift up to quads. So we get a chip on the pass rusher. Great. Now we're going to take this big shot across the field here. And when you're essentially in one by three or quads, it's always this weak safety as the coverage identification or oftentimes this weak safety, especially if we're going to chip or do something shallow down here, we should anticipate him hunting up the first vertical coming towards him. Usually the number three, again, counting outside in, one, two, three. The number three coming across. Whoever's running with him thinks he's got this safety help usually. Almost damn near every coverage, you're going to think, oh, I've got that help. But right here, we just run right by it. Even though there might be two guys technically responsible, neither one can cover this post deep. So you've got two guys there. Whoop. Great job from Love seeing it. And that is a massive throw on third and 16 for a touchdown. Outstanding vision. Great pass protection as well. Check out that chip on the right. Yeah. Boom. Nothing. Dot down the field. Great throw. Great vision. Big touchdown. Let's go. Next one here. Fourth and six from the 40. Start of the third quarter. We're going to run double stick up top. Nice job putting it right on him. Protect him from the corner. First down. This is big time situational football. We're going to get empty, get a little pressure. Jordan Love, see it, identify it. Again, it's really nice when you can have a running back run a stick route or a quick out. So again, to me here, this is just double stick, old school West Coast verbiage. That means a clear must outside release go. That number two runs a must run out stick or quick out. And then the number three runs a stick. And so right here, they decide to pressure from the field off the edge. It creates this void. The only thing you're kind of paying attention to is what does this corner do? Don't run that guy into a collision. So he gets any depth at all. You can throw it to that outside guy. You really read that two and three as one kind of at the same time. So see that space, see that corner, boom, right on him. Nice job. That throw looks like it's behind him, but it's really protecting him. So it's not allowing him to run into a big collision again. When Jordan Love is at his best, in my opinion, he plays with great rhythm and is on time. One, boom, down. Again, look at the base. Left, right, boom. Love it. Next one here, third and three. Another beautiful play call. Going to bring Jones into the backfield. He's going to sneak out down near her to the bottom on a little sneak or hide flat. Going to run that with essentially a triple pick. Jordan Love does a nice job seeing it. Again, this is a pretty easy read, but we got to let Jones kind of sort through here his exit through the line of scrimmage, and then 50 is going to try to read him out, follow him. That's a tough assignment right there. 
to the big fella. You know, maybe a little bit of a less trajectory, less touch on this ball makes this thing an even better throw. But I love the design here. So the first element of it is we shift, right? We go from empty to in here. This linebacker right here is covering the back on what I'm going to call the sneak or hide flat across here. We're going to pair that with essentially what is a triple pick. So all three of these guys are running in rake, breaking routes. Now, they're not all three running like moving picks like I'm drawing, but that's the gist of it. And so, you know, maybe a little firmer ball makes this a touchdown, but it's certainly a great design, nice enough, good enough execution. You know, he almost throws it, Jordan Love almost throws it like a screen. I don't think he has to bail here and do this, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Like he doesn't have to bail to set up a screen. Just take your normal drop, hit your back foot, and throw it. Now maybe you have to climb the pocket because Watt's going to get you. Or you, maybe you just throw a firmer ball and it's just a touchdown. <laughs> Regardless, it's excellent third down execution. It's a very nice tackle from 50 or else that thing is a touchdown. Again, watch the whole execution of this. Shift him in. Watch him exit through the line of scrimmage. B-gap. Nice catch. Everything except the high knee touchdown. So close. Next one here, third and nine. This is a bummer. I think this is double post down here to the bottom with the one and the two. We've got an opportunity for the inside post. And I think Jordan Love just misses his throw. Now, originally I thought it was maybe more of a true middle field read and they're just not on the same page. But this to me is one of those things where, man, you love this matchup. 37's got his back turned. You got a big guy running down the middle of the field. You got an opportunity for a touchdown. And in fact, they hit something similar to this later in the game. But this idea being that we're going to come out here and go inside post. That's where the ball is thrown. Outside post. Okay, Split field coverage. So there are the two safeties. Here's the linebacker type trying to carry the vertical of num the new number three, right? So when we go to the flat here. He becomes the one, the two, the three, just for how we all identify it. So this linebacker type is trying to match the vertical of number three. Now Jordan Love throws it like he's running what I'm used to calling more of a middle field read, like take the middle. The player runs it more of like a, a traditional post. The coaching point I will say about double post that I like the best is that I don't really care where you are in the field. I like to have really specific landmarks for these posts. So this is about as tight as you'll see for double post run usually. But in my world, we'll just use high school for example. High school, I used to say on double post, the first post, his landmark is the back pylon or the inside post. The outside post is the near upright. So wherever we are on the field, we knew where we were going to be. Now you wouldn't want that back pylon as the landmark here. I'm just using it as an example for having the details of what that looks like as opposed to up, cross face, up, cross face. That leaves a lot of gray area for me. This looks like a gray area throw because I think the touchdown opportunity is there. Jordan Love either misses it or they're not on the same page. Again, you can see the flat angle of 88 going across and flat as opposed to more vertical. So again, just that little nuance and difference between what should be another third down touchdown. Instead, it's just an incompletion. And again, from the back here, you can really see this is not close to being completed. So to me, it looks like either a miscommunication or just a spray miss. I mean, right? That, that's off by yards. He's either anticipating him to run through the E and it's a touchdown on the takes or we're just not on the same page. Tough one. Halftime, you dig the channel and you haven't already, please like, subscribe. Hit the bell, get the notifications. I sincerely appreciate you subscribing to the channel. It means a lot to me, so thank you for doing that. Again, the Quarterback School Patreon community. You know about it. Join, become a member, get even more Quarterback School content. We also have Quarterback School courses. Now, these courses are the premium content available through the channel. These are deep, deep dives on my favorite football topics. We have courses on RPOs, tempos, pass protection. The best-selling course is how to beat every coverage. We even have an entire offensive system available for you, so hop over there and enroll. We also have a bunch of free resources available. Check out all of those linked in the video description. Finally, make sure to follow me across social media platforms. I appreciate your support. As for this video, let's get back to it. Next one here. Second and six. We take a big play action shot up top. 
We're going to be able to come out of this thing with a little sale. Nice job. Again, it's a big chunk. Start, stop, drop, and roll is in effect again. You just, when you see guys this wide open, you would love to just get a better ball so he can catch it and run. Again, I'm not saying it's easy. Hey, there's nothing about this that I'm saying is easy. I'm just saying that you would love to be able to just kind of feel this space as we come out here and get into this area. Instead of stopping it and making it kind of down on his knees, got to be a tough catch, to just give us a better ball, a more accurate ball that allows some yak after this thing, make somebody miss and house this thing. And again, it's not easy. Okay, I'm not in a vacuum here where I say these guys are not running at us as we have to make this throw. I'm just saying when you turn on the film, there are a lot of really good completions that none of them look like they're absolute dots or dimes because we've got guys flopping on the ground trying to make catches all the time. So it, it can be me just describing the film. Not easy. Guys running at us. Okay, But we also get the throw off. And it's just low. It's it's not. That's it. And it's not. The reason I mention it and emphasize it. Is this is not a one off. Right. We've already seen guys rolling around. We've already seen guys having to stop. We've seen sky mails. Next one here. Third and seven. We hit that middle field pipe. This is the one I was talking about. We missed on the double post earlier. This to me is more of a traditional middle field read. Where he's going to go more vertical. Up the middle of the field. Now it's a great job kind of seeing the coverage. This to me ends up being what a lot of people call non-traditional cover two. So what looks like quarter, quarter, half here at the snap. Again, split field coverage, half field. This looks like quarter, quarter to me at the half. Well, it's not. This guy's getting to the half field. So it's an even better play. He's coming down. We end up getting what I'm going to call this middle field read. So up and take the middle as opposed to that kind of flatter post we saw earlier. So this is the throw. It's a great throw. It's paired with a little 3-2 swap. So the number three here comes out, and he runs to the corner. The number one runs that little looper return. we got multiple runaways, great shots versus multiple coverages, good versus all concept here. Great job from Jordan Love seeing it. Again, playing with great base. Look at the base. Back foot, boom, tight hitch, throw. Anticipation to the area, big chunk right down the middle of the field. It's awesome football. Again, there is evidence that he can do it. It is the consistency of living in this world, this base, this timing, this vision, being on the same page. You know, that essentially is the same throw as we wanted down in the end zone. It's just a different route, in my opinion. Great catch, big, big chunk, let's go. Next one here, beautiful throw to the number three down here to the bottom on a corner. That is rough leverage for that linebacker to be in. That's a tough duty all the way around. My guy 50 getting a little bit exposed in pass coverage all day. Jordan Love, great timing, hitch, tight reset, ball out, beautiful throw, big time hookup. Again, this is outstanding. I love the rhythm, I love the base, I love the timing. Again, just look at the leverage here. So he's the guy running the corner. We're playing man coverage with a linebacker that far off and inside. I mean, you can't get this ball thrown fast enough. This is outstanding. Up to the corner. The drop here, really like it. Three, tight hitch. So when he gets to the top, right, it's a tight hitch, tight reset. Ball out, on time, in rhythm, in phase, in structure, however you want to describe it. Outstanding. This is Jordan Love at his best right now. Beautiful strike, driving it down the field, good clean read, nice design, nice play call, being aggressive down the field. One, two, three, tight hitch, ball out. Outstanding, nice chunk. Next one here, third and 10. We're going to work dagger up top. Number one running a deep in. Great patience right here. Again, Jordan Love, even though it's not quite as on time as some of the other great throws we've seen, he does a great job with his footwork. He's locked in with his base. Patient, no heel click. Look at that nice touch. I mean, granted, it's wide open in the middle of the field. Who knows what's going on coverage-wise there, but it's a great job from Jordan Love. Watch the top of his drop. Base, no heel click. Boom, patience on that back foot. Look at the middle of the field. And they're trying to get to, you know, whatever this Big 12 Tampa 2 is. And we're just going to come in here and rip this thing. Let the clear go. 
and let that dagger come right in behind it and all sorts of space. Again, to me, laughable, funny, a lot of space, probably not the world the Steelers want to live in consistently. Way too easy on third and long. Way too easy. You can see that middle linebacker type 37 run with the clear. Look at the space. I mean, that is a perfect call. <laughs> it doesn't get better than that. Thank you very much. It doesn't get easier than that. It's a really nice job, Joe, patience-wise. It's great pass protection. Beautiful weighted throw. Again, you know, who knows why these guys jump to catch it on their face. But that is a perfect throw, strike. Look how open he is. Big, big chunk. Let's go. Next one here, interception. This is a few things for me here. Okay, now we've got two double moves up top. The corner makes an outstanding play on the ball. It is a world-class play from the corner. Nice job from the safety being in the right spot, right time. Uh, I don't think he puts this ball exactly where he wants, so it's a little bit of that precision, just not quite there. I think his footwork's a little bit all over the place. You know, I'll draw this thing up from the wide again. But I'm not that mad at the decision. I think if, if you're going to give your guy an opportunity, fine with that. Just you can't miss on the throw. So for me here, when I'm saying two double moves, I think of this play as eventually just the bones of all go. So you're going to go all go, and you're going to put two on one on the safety. You know, how you get there is different. So how you get there is what I'm used to calling a stick nod by the inside. So he's going to come up, nod, and get into the stick. That's the scene. Then the go is going to be on this wheel. So out, up, and go. Now the throw for me needs to be way more into the corner. You can't miss down here. That's not going to work. And that allows the ball to get tipped. You know, I, in a perfect world for me, I would probably want to read this thing out where I'm reading the safety. And it's it's not an easy read because it happens bang, bang down here in the red zone. But if he gets with, you know, I, I personally love trying to rip it into this. And if that's not there, then having something come across. And then you can kind of go inside out. So one here two here it almost looks like he says uh, i like my matchup out there i'm just going to rip it and then he doesn't isn't precise with where the ball goes so let's watch that safety up top and see what it looks like working inside out boom you know if you threw the same timing to the stick nod so with anticipation to the stick nod you know it's still a tight contested throw i also don't love just running a backside in on the back of this i want something coming into my face in the flat out there at the end of the day, I'm still not that mad at the decision. It's just the ball. So instead of the ball being right here, what I'm saying is the ball needs to be right here. And again, easier said than done. You can still see the bones here of what I called four verticals, right? So the outside go and the seam. You just get there with double move, double move, and it's essentially that two-on-one on this safety, reading it inside out. It just looks like he predetermines and misses the throw and the corner makes a nice play. Then results in a pick, which is a bummer. It's the NFL. The red zone is difficult. Again, I personally would like to have something underneath those two routes so that if it is muddy like this, you got something working into your face. It can be a number of different things. Okay, so what could be working into your face here? You could run like a jerk route here, come up and then come across. You could run just like a check shoot whatever you want to call it, just something over here so that when this stick nod isn't there, when the double isn't there, you have something coming into your vision as opposed to having to flip all the way back across. So just little elements of coordination within the structure of it. And again, just look at his footwork here. The ball's on the inside of the hash, pump, drift, throw it over the guard, and it's a hell of a play. And it's a pick, and that's a bummer, and that's how you lose games on the road. So last couple here, we've got fourth quarter, less than a minute to go, first and 10, balls on the 19. Now this is going to end up being a massive play to the number three down here on what I'm going to call that middle field read or pipe. This is verse what I, I'm going to call a non-traditional Tampa. It looks like a huge hit. I saw some people praising this throw. To me, this is really lucky. You're going to need a massive play in two minutes. I get that part of it. That's not, you know, that's great. To me, the ball almost has to go to the wrap in on time. And that's probably where the ball should go. So right here, 
wrap in with a little pivot. To me, this is wide open on time. Okay, so what's not on time is taking the number three here, running it through the middle of the field, having both the safeties on it, and then just assuming one of these safeties is going to fall asleep at the wheel, and we will just be able to continue and get this like chuck up late down the middle of the field for a big play. <laughs> okay, so it's one of those things where, hey, man, I get it. You're going to need some good fortune here in a two minute to get a big chunk. I think most guys would just say, hey, you got to throw the wrap in. If you're not going to throw the wrap in, don't call it, right? Look up top at the number one. They're trying to get to a non-traditional Tampa. See the guy up top over the number two. He's running to the middle of the field. There's Tampa. He's running with the vertical of number three. The wrap in is open on time. Throw it. You can't think you're going to get, look at this throw. <laughs> Come on, man. Safety. Safety. Here's that middle field throw. It's supposed to be there. You've also got the guy working to the middle of the field right here. And this ball ends up getting caught over here. This is not it. This is not a world you want to live in. I know it works here. To me, it's not the correct read. It's lucky. It's fortunate quarterbacking. Sometimes it works. Most times it doesn't. The film doesn't lie, though. You can see nine right down the hash. I love a good in right down the hash. It's there. Throw it. Throw it, throw it, throw it, throw it, throw it, chuck it, get lucky. Good for you. Next one here, fourth and two, 17 seconds left. Got to get a first down. Nice check down up top. Love the operation elements of this. I really like this play. In fact, I used to run this play a long time ago in Green Bay. Very similar play where it was like a check vertical. Great job operationally here, getting it down giving it to the umpire, setting the ball, got to get a first down, give yourself a chance, come up, get the first down, quickly hand the ball, get the ball snapped, for, so make sure you get another play. So you got to need a first down to stay alive. You get a first down, get down, hand the ball to the ump. Last one here, another interception. You got to push it down the field. I actually like the bones of this idea. I think it's potentially there on both sides. Don't think it's necessarily executed great. we got some safety issues on the sideline as well. And I'll show exactly what I'm talking about. There's no real good, obviously, opportunity here. The two things that I will say. Well, first, let's talk about just what the play is. So for me here, I like the idea of I'm going to call this scissors. So up and then where the ball ends up trying to go right there. Same thing on the other side. So up. And then we get that like post under. I like this idea. I like it also because it almost operates as like a deep pick play where you're coming up and then whoever's going to cover that post, you almost want to run into them and collision them and then rip this thing on time right here. It's kind of a specialty play right between the 15 and the 25. I think it's there on both sides. So, I mean, if he were to do the same throw over here, it probably works. Same type of idea. I just think it's a tick late. So instead of ripping it perfectly right out of the break, he kind of waits and allows the interior players to come make this interception. Same thing up here. I'll pause it at the top. Both sides are there. Now the other part about it, well, first of all, I'll let this in go. Again, right out of the break down here to the bottom, that's a touchdown. Same thing up top. Right out of the break, touchdown by the two number ones. It's the same play. It's just late. So whatever the drop is supposed to be, one, two, three, four, like, you know, like that's a recess he drop. That doesn't look like the normal stuff we see from Jordan Love in this offense. That looks air ratey. One, two, three, four, five, like jump around, right? Like that, that just doesn't look normal. Just play within the structure of the offense. That is what is there. Bummer. Now, the other thing I will say, don't be shocked, especially if you're the Steelers, and now that people have this on film, if you're going to do this for a last play type of environment, I understand why you would want to do this all the way across right at the front of the goal line. If you're going to traditionally rush four here like this and have this huge void here, you can already see the uh, 
fingerprints of rugby in what the uh, tush push, right? There, there's a space for other sports to influence this sport. And so right here, if you just had, pretend you had like three dudes who kind of knew how to play rugby, and I don't pretend to be those types of guys, but they exist on football teams. So what you do here is you just raise up, you traditionally rush this. So we've got essentially three right here, one, two, three. And we triple this thing and we just play rugby out to the boundary. Now rugby guys would take their chances. One, two, three, four to stop this. You got to stop three laterals in a tight space with guys who know what they're doing and you could potentially run like overruns. So what I mean by that is you, you throw it here. We start running this way. We start playing in phase here. We pitch it here. Instead of running out of bounds, we then have a built-in play where we'll inside hand off this thing. And this isn't me making this up. This is just rugby playing to space. So again, don't be shocked to see it. All these guys have different catalogs for end of game situations. I like me some rugby right here. I also like this play. This play probably should work. It's just late. If you throw to number either number one on either side on time, it's a touchdown. Whoo. Close. Close, no cigar. So that is a wrap. Jordan Love, the Packers. I thought Jordan Love played pretty well for the vast majority of this game. I thought there were some throws and some some of those things that I feel like I talk a lot about with Jordan Love where when he's in rhythm, in phase, in structure of the offense, smooth, getting the ball out, being decisive, looking really good. I thought he showed some playmaking ability as well, some out of structure, being able to keep his eyes down the field, good enough throw. I think the thing that the film kind of shouts is some of the precision, certainly that you're used to in Green Bay and that you see at the top tier of guys spinning it across the league. The accuracy is just a little bit wider than maybe some normal kind of like tight window throws. So throws that are completions with our guys on the ground. Throws that are completions are back hip throws. Throws that should be completions are sky mails. And I think it can be tethered a little bit to the footwork. The other part of it is just being more precise with it and being more intentional. I think you can still see some of the little like nuance and details of missed opportunity, especially in the red zone, I thought got exposed. But overall, man, Jordan Love doing a lot right there, playing well enough, good enough to give his chance a team to win it there at the end. Thank you so much for hanging to the end. I will see you next time. Have a good one.